Whether neutrals are for you the foundation of your wardrobe or the thing that pulls your bright eclectic colours together, they are a central part of most people's everyday style. For a long time I was definitely wearing the wrong neutrals for my skin tone and my colour season and realising that opened up a lot of doors for me. I first realised that I was wearing the wrong tones for me when I dyed my hair from blonde to brown. It wasn't amazing. Some people love it. Some people say it really brought out my features. I highly disagree. <laughs> um, it was fine. But the first day I did this, the reason it was so horrific to me was because I was wearing this um, kind of like rich burnt orange Top, which I had previously loved when I was blonde because the fact that it doesn't work for me wasn't so obvious but with my hair such a wrong colour and my top such a wrong colour it all together just made me go oh my god what have I done Just to catch you all up to speed, my name is Ellie Jean, I am a style consultant and on this channel we find our personal style by finding ourselves There are 12 colour seasons which I break down in this video up here, or is it up here? Up here? I want to say up here. Um, 12 colour seasons based on your most dominant characteristics, so whether you're light or dark, cool or warm, or bright and soft. Each colour season has a unique combination of these elements which I break down again in that video that um, it's here somewhere and the idea is that you echo the colours in your features in your clothing so literally the colours you find in your features and then colours within that same palette. For the past decade I would say that neutrals have reigned supreme. Obviously there's been a huge minimalist aesthetic for like the past 10 years. We've obviously had blips of like dopamine dressing, Y2K influences, and there was like a huge 80s revival in the early 2010s um, but throughout there has definitely been this minimal undertone and kind of minimal style that people keep coming back to. I mean even now the vanilla aesthetic or the vanilla girl aesthetic is huge. Coastal grandma was very neutral um, so there's a lot of styles that people are drawn to which are very neutral and minimal. Um, but what if neutrals don't suit you? Well, I'm here to tell you that there is absolutely neutrals that suit you. They just might not be the first ones that you're drawn to. A lot of people gravitate towards black, which is a big mistake for a lot of people. Black is quite a hard colour to wear unless you have quite contrasted features in one way or another. I have a video all about like the irises of your eyes and how some stylists say that if you have like a black line around the edge of your eye, you can wear black. I think there's some credibility to that, but mostly I think it's the contrast in your features, so dark hair, light skin, very dark skin, very light eyes. For example, these kinds of contrast are what can carry black the best. And yet most people's wardrobes are full of black. My wardrobe is, I wanna say like 30% black. In fact, I have statistics. I use open wardrobe to kind of assess some statistics of my wardrobe. So 75 out of 300 plus items are black. Like that's an insane number, I think, considering black isn't in my colour season. But obviously I keep a lot of older pieces and for a long time I didn't know that black is actually quite a hard neutral to wear. Beige, I want to say comes in second at 19. Beige and off-white, so I've got 28 off-white. Um, and this has been ever since I've started realising that lighter tones suit me better. White, I've got 36, because I love wearing white. Yeah, navy, 20. So those are kind of the neutrals in my wardrobe as well as blue. I've got 34 blue items in my wardrobe since I've started thinking about colour seasons. I've added those colours in. So let's break down the best neutrals for you and your colour season. So if you're a dark winter, obviously your dominant features are dark, cool and soft. When I say that, like winters are in general bright. So winters are a bright kind of category. Dark winters are on the softer end of that spectrum. So they're still bright, but they're on the softer end of bright, if that makes sense. So dark winters look amazing in black, like charcoal-y blacks. Anything smoky looks incredible on a dark winter. They can look incredible in white. Obviously, shades of grey and silver, especially darker silvers, look amazing. Navies, rich navies, dark navies can look incredible. Depends if you class green as a neutral. Obviously, it's a, like a primary colour, so you probably wouldn't. It really depends on the shade of green, but like if you are going to opt for like green as a neutral, more like foresty greens are gonna work best. True winters have a little bit more clarity in their features, so obviously same kind of colours. They look amazing in like greys. They can have some lighter silvers, lighter greys in their palette, lighter blues, 
quite clear blue denims, quite bright colours I would say, even though they're neutrals, if that makes sense. So like leaning on denim is a really great way to, as like a neutral if you're a winter, to look like you're wearing something neutral but actually it's quite a bright colour. Not a lot of neutrals in true winter palettes other than like white, greys, shades of grey. They can just about take a chocolate brown but that is just. And yeah, lots of indigos. Bright winter can lean a little bit more on the chocolate browns, still not really like highly recommended. Have to be very, very dark, very close to black. Again, very bright navies, like very bright denim is gonna look really great. Blacks, whites, shades of silver. They can also take like much lighter denims than the other winters, because obviously bright is the lightest of the winters. So lighter denims like acid wash can look amazing near their face. Indigo, I really feel is the word here for the navies. And yeah, different shades of grey can kind of lean, especially with all the winters, you can lean on taupes a little bit, not as much as summers, I'm going to come on to that, but the taupe might potentially, potentially work depending on what you frame it with. Okay, bright spring. I feel like springs in general are going to struggle the hardest with neutrals because obviously springs look incredible in colour and I would encourage you if you're a spring to try and draw some more colour into your palette because you're just gonna shine and radiate through it even if you like like you might be drawn to like darker colors but the thing about when you're a light season is you can go lighter in tone and it still look dark on you so kind of think like contextually about what is dark against you but bright springs actually are kind of dark so bright spring i would say is possibly the most misunderstood color season melanie murphy is the clearest bright spring to me that I've ever seen. She almost looks like a winter, but then she can carry that red hair so easily because she's got those green eyes and she's got a lot of warmth in her skin. Even though she's got that very cool black hair that people associate with winters, she's th like, that is a bright spring in a nutshell. They're kind of chameleons. So some neutrals if you're a bright spring. Creams, obviously if, if I'm gonna say that for all springs, but for bright springs, quite intense creams, like almost yellow. Like you can pretty much wear yellow as a bright spring and it will look like cream against you because your features are so bright. Very, very rich and bright tans. Think like Timberlands, like almost, like almost mustard is going to look neutral against you. You can wear very bright blues. So again, denim, like very bright, like quite, like almost green blues in your denim which is obviously a very hard thing to achieve lean on green green is going to look neutral against you bright springs can wear black because they have a lot of intensity in their features like Melanie Murphy there are some like grays in this palette but I would say they should be very very warm grays and to be honest I would kind of avoid that like it's in this palette but I'm not I'm not sure about that but like rust very bright rust it's gonna look amazing on a spring Okay, true spring, obviously you are warm first, so your dominant features are warm, bright, and light, but warm first. So obviously warm colors, oranges, kind of rich tans like I just talked about. You can carry some browns, some like warm browns are gonna look great. Everything I said about yellow and cream when I was talking about bright spring applies to you. Blues, you're gonna struggle with more than a bright spring. So denim is actually quite difficult for you, I would opt rather than blue denim near your face. Like it's fine in jeans, like that's far away from your face, it's far away from like any skin that's showing, so that's fine. Um, but like this is obviously near my face because I'm a summer and so it kind of works. But if you're gonna opt for a denim like jacket, I'd go for like a tan suede one over a blue one. Or like a cream one or, or maybe potentially even like a chocolatey brown, but mm, it, that's still probably too cool for you. But potentially, depending on the outfit, that could work. More like mushroomy tones. I'm not seeing a lot of khaki here, but I would say potentially some khakis, but like very light khaki tones. Um, like somewhere between khaki and cream, I don't know what you'd call that. That could potentially work. Light spring, this is where the khakis come in. Seeing lots of khaki tones here. Um, obviously very light creams, all ranges of cream, amazing for a light spring. You're obviously bordering on summer, so some like pinky neutrals are beginning to work, but lean like peachy over pinky. So like some peachy neutrals. You can take some like very light warm browns. There are some greys in this palette. Be careful with your greys. Make sure they're warm rather than cool greys. Obviously grey is inherently cool, but you have warmer ones 
if that makes sense, more like mushroomy. David Kibbe, I saw him write somewhere when you're trying to wear gray as an autumn, which I know I'm not talking about, but I think it applies to warm seasons. Think more mushroom than gray and you'll be more headed in the right direction. Very light denims, amazing on a light spring. Those kind of like almost tealy, like obviously more leaning turquoisey than purpley. Um, obviously denim is gonna be like blue, it's gonna be blue. So very light acid wash, like very light blues, gonna look really, really cool. Light Summer, this is me. I have only recently began to understand Light Summer Neutrals. I think this is my one limitation really as a style consultant is that anything that relates to me is harder to see. And I think that is the thing when you're learning about body types and essences and colors. It's so like personal. It could be quite hard to see through the fog. But light summers, I'm kind of beginning to understand a lot better. So I personally can take some creams and there are some creams on this, but as long as they're not too yellowy. So I'd say more like off-white can work really, really well. Kind of like ecru. And I'm seeing that a lot here. Like I used to feel like, why doesn't gray work for me? Gray is like a summer color. But I'm looking at this palette here and there's not a lot of gray in there, which kind of confirms exactly what I was thinking. Summers in general are cool, soft and light, but light summers are on the brighter end of that spectrum because they're almost leaning into spring. So obviously grays are very soft, so they're like up on that end. Um, so I kind of have struggled with grays and it makes a lot of sense because there's more taupe in this than gray. And so that's what I'm beginning to lean into. Obviously lots of blues, lots of denims, gonna look amazing on you. You can wear some softer denims like this denim I'm wearing right now. It's perfect for all summers because it's got a lot of gray through it like very dimensional blues. Nothing too bright, nothing too clear. It's gonna look really, really good. I really love, there's one taupe on here, which is kind of purpley. Love that color, haven't got that. I would say it's like almost an aubergine, but very, very muted, very, very soft, love that. And gray blues, amazing, great for you as well. True summers, I would say all the grays in true summer are kind of pinky purpley. So kind of just that infusion of like blue and pink into your neutrals is gonna be really complimentary. Obviously lots of light shades of blue, cool summers or true summers, depending on what you call it. I call it true summers. They are cool first. So they have a lot more clarity than the other two summers. Like I would say the two seasons that are potentially hardest to distinguish are true summer and true winter because they're both kind of similar levels of clarity but obviously winter is just a little bit more clear than summers which theoretically sounds quite easy to distinguish but like in person that can be quite hard so yeah they can take slightly cooler colors but as you can see the colors are much lighter than what you'd have in the true winter palette Again, lots of taupes, lots of grey mushroomy tones, They're obviously leaning cool, lots of light blues, um, not a lot of dark blue, a little bit of dark blue, but not a lot of dark blue in true summer. Um, so very light denim, but you can take some dark denim, but maybe keep it away from your face. Maybe try and keep lighter denims up here. And kind of rose tones, I know that this isn't technically neutral, but any like neutrals which are more rosy than peachy is amazing for summers. Okay, Soft Summer, my favorite palette, not my palette, but my favorite palette. If I could be any color season, it would be a Soft Summer. A lot of celebrities, bizarrely, are Soft Summers or potentially people don't know what they are and class them as a Soft Summer. But I think a lot of celebrities are Soft Summers. Kate Middleton is a Soft Summer and I absolutely love her in like soft greens. Oh, it's absolutely stunning. So obviously Soft Summers is where you can really lean on grey. Soft Summers look amazing in shades of grey. Um, they can look really great in mushroomy tones. You can just about start wearing khaki as long as it's almost grey rather than like really green and bright khaki, like much more grey tones, like more safari tones you can just about get away with as a soft summer. Pinky browns you can wear. Obviously all shades of denim, all shades of blue, um, very gray ones. Yeah, lots of grays. You know, a gray and silver can even look quite bright against you. I've heard that soft summers struggle to wear silver, but I see no reason as to why that would be true. Soft summers can wear some gold, I've heard, but I'm not seeing it in this palette, so you tell me. Chocolate browns also can look amazing on soft summers. 
Okay, soft autumn. Everything I said about mushroom, this is where I would begin to apply that. So if you want to wear like more greys, lean more mushrooms, slightly warmer, more brown influences in your greys. You can wear creams, warm browns, khaki, lots of khaki in soft autumn. As you can see, there is some blue remaining. So some of that denim would be better if you lean more purple than like blue. Peachy tones, talking like we talked about before. You can wear a lot of like off-white um, ecru tones, especially when they're quite warm. True autumns. Same applies as to what I was saying about springs really, like very warm rusts. You can wear a lot of khaki, you can wear a lot of like more rich. Tones, I would say rich is the word I would use to describe autumn colors. Kibby's word for autumn is fiery, and I love that. And I see springs as like more golden and autumns as more fiery. That's quite an interesting distinction that I like to use between them. I think a lot of people struggle to decide if they're an autumn or a spring. If you have brown eyes, you're much likely to be an autumn. So that's one thing to kind of help you along. You can have brown eyed springs, but it's rare. Very rich creams, not bright, but rich. <laughs> So not light, so still kind of like got that gray infusion, but strong in color. Rich, warm browns, moving away from like chocolate browns here, more towards like rusty browns, coppery kind of tones can look amazing. Almost no denim tones at this point, except for purple, like aubergine blues. Um, can aubergine even be a blue? If you literally search autumn palette, you get a lot of autumny blues and purples, like in Pinterest. Um, I think that's a really great way to understand the difference between like a cool blue and purple and a warmer blue and purple. Like I would try and keep those colors away from your face if you can, but incorporate them through your outfits. Like kind of think of them as colors that complement the warmer colors in in your wardrobe. Kind of think of compliments to that rather than trying to think of a warm blue. Think of a blue that's gonna go with your warm kind of brown, if that makes sense. Cause you're not gonna be looking for things that go near your face that are like blue. Um, but they're going to complement your other pieces. Anyway, like warm creams, very warm light browns. I don't know what you'd call that colour that I'm looking at right now, but I love it. There's still some like greys in this palette. And I would say they're like greeny greys. So maybe something to think about. And dark autumn is the brightest of the autumns. But autumns are warm, soft and dark. Dark autumns are the darkest and the brightest of the autumns. So they're almost a winter, um, but not quite because they're warm. They're very similar in brightness to dark winters. They're kind of soft, kind of bright, both at once. <laughs> almost all the blues have gone out of this palette except kind of bright blues, I would say. Kind of, these are what I'm talking about, like autumny blues. Like they're almost turquoisey, teal. Teal is the word that I am looking for. An autumn blue is teal. So that's definitely something to look for tealy blues, tealy denims, a lot of green in this palette, lots of khaki, warm browns, chocolate browns, rust browns, copper browns, all of that is amazing. Very rich warm creams. As you can see, these creams are quite dark, like they're almost like a light brown over a cream. Um, and that's kind of bridge that you want to kind of be kind of managing. Dark autumns are softer than dark winters. So and they're also softer than bright springs. So you can't wear black and white quite as easily. You might just, but it's not really like a part of your palette that I would recommend. Like I'd much more recommend like a chocolate brown than a black, just because it's that little bit softer and autumns are just that little bit softer. Ready browns, anything rich and ready. Burgundy can be a really great neutral. I know you often might not think of burgundy as a neutral, but that can be really great for both autumns and like dark autumns and dark winters. So dark winters, I would say, I, I had a distinction for this once. It's like one is more like wine red, one's more like something else. I'll have a think about how I used to distinguish that. If you, there's a TikTok I've done about like the right red for you. Um, I kind of break it down there. And greys, you can start wearing some warm, like some darker greys, some charcoaly tones if you're a dark autumn as well. Okay, I hope this has helped you think about your neutrals um, as your color season. Neutrals should help you tie all the other things in your wardrobe together. And maybe you have a wardrobe that's absolutely built on neutrals and you have this really like mushroomy, as in my style root mushroom. If you, if you don't know what style roots are, check out this video. Um, but mushroom is kind of like elegant, minimal, classic kind of 
um, ideas in fashion and you're much more likely to lean on neutral if you have that style route in which case hopefully this video has been very helpful if you've enjoyed this video I really think you will enjoy my video on the 101 of patterns um, where I break down everything you need to know about how to style patterns together it's a very good video it needs some rebranding because no one's watching it but it's probably one of the best videos I've ever made and it goes into a lot of depth a lot of helpful depth so definitely go and check that out thank you so much for watching I will see you next time